Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friday live stream. And what a great day to be still involved with crypto. And if you haven't checked so far, I got to tell you, things are looking pretty good. So today is one of those green days that everybody hears about. And we like these green days because, of course, it validates what we have always thought and known, which was that if we just stick around and because we're in the right place at the right time, things will favor us. And I got to tell you, today's a great day. So I usually don't look at price action, but I mean, let's be honest, it's going pretty good. So I got to talk about it. So Bitcoin 24 hours up 5%, 5%. You know, the average, the average annual returns are like the S&P 500 is between like eight and 10%, depending on, of course, how long you've been in. And imagine that in 24 hours, you get that in one day, not bad. Or if you were around for seven days, you're up 15%. Ethereum 12 and three, I think let's, I, you know, I think it'd be easier to just talk about what's down. Is there anything down? Uniswap is down 1.7 over seven days. But as far as the 24, it's looking pretty good. So why, why is that? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. Obviously, I think there's uh, there's more buyers than sellers. That could be it. There's rumors about uh, what uh, Trump may be doing uh, as an announcement for uh, the Bitcoin convention, but it's anybody's guess. But here's what is going on in the crypto space today. So first of all, I want to talk about Binance. I want to talk about miners, uh, Bitcoin miners and the outflows, which I think is quite uh, ridiculous. Then we're going to take a look at uh, what a trader says that uh, could happen between Bitcoin and gold. It looks like a 5X. And lastly, we'll talk about CrowdStrike, which is a, it looks like a massive uh, update that led to a lot of what they call the uh, blue screen of death. So the first things first, Binance. And Binance, if you followed along uh, for quite some time, is that uh, Binance had quite a little bit of tumble and a, and a tumultuous relationship with the U.S. government uh, because of what uh, CZ Binance had actually admitted to, which said, look, I didn't do my fair share of the KYC and AML, and I'll take responsibility, which he is serving four months in prison. I think it's min minimal security prison. Correct me in the comments section. But uh, now it's like Binance is like, wait. Well, that's what it is. Let's work with the government. And what they're doing, they just got a court approval to invest customer funds in T-bills. So here's what we have. So Binance has officially received court approval to invest U.S. customer fiat funds into U.S. Treasury bills. Now, I'm not for sure how this actually works. I do not have an account with Binance. I am an American citizen. Maybe with, I just don't use Binance or Binance US. I, I couldn't even tell you if it's actually up or not. But I don't know how this is going to work as far as the fiat or the US dollar or just you know currency that, that you have or fiat, if they're gonna be able to do that across the board, if you have say uh, a Euro, if you have say a franc or whatever kind of uh, fiat that you have, if they're gonna allow you to do that and get into US treasury bills or they're gonna be able to invest in that. I'm not for sure, check with Binance, but it looks like they struck a deal and things are going pretty good for them. A recently released court filing shows the official approval. Exchange is authorized to invest certain customer assets, they're probably be Americans, into the United States debt securities. Binance has recently settled a criminal charge with the US which we just talked about. So if you want to take a look at this, uh, here is the uh, actual listing, the actual decision uh, by the courts. This is the US District Court for the District of Columbia, and it states very clear right here, they're able to invest certain customer assets into United States Treasury bills for which they have gotten approval. And it was interesting because uh, this was actually brought to my attention a couple of days ago. I didn't really think too much about it, uh, where Binance Square talked about what are Treasury bills and why are they important? And uh, I was just like, well, I guess they're trying to you know, educate their audience, but really what it comes down to is they're gonna be able to use your fiat and put that into T-bills. Now, if you want that to happen, great. If not, talk to Binance. I just wanna update everybody about what's going on. So that's what we have for that little piece. Congratulations to Binance. I gotta tell you, some people may not like that, but let's be honest, T-bills, pretty darn safe. Anyhow, let me show you anything about that in the comments section. And also, I came across this article this morning. This is from Crypto Slate. And it talks about miners reduce holdings amid rising prices. And this is true. And if you just look at just the article, it's fine. And it'll tell you like, hey, this is what's going on. Miners are selling. They are uh, reducing their Bitcoin holdings. Uh, of course, as the price goes up, they need to keep the lights on. And of course, they're going to sell and take profits. I know it's a weird thing to talk about, taking profits. But 
it actually works out for some people. However, I just wanted to show everybody that even though we talk about this and people get a little nervous, like, oh, well, now the, buy now the miners are going to sell off. And then we just had Germany sell off. And now this Mount Gox thing is going to happen. Everybody's selling. What the heck's going on? I just want you to remind you just to, A, relax. It's going to be okay. And B, just remember that uh, you control your, your sphere of control. You can't control everything. And when you do something like this and you see something like this, just remember to you know, really dig in and find the information or zoom out. Uh, this is Ben's website, which I gleefully steal all his information. And you can check it out. Link's in the description, 10% off the first month. But what I'm looking at is the minor flow to exchange. Now keep this with a grain of salt because not all wallets have been discovered for all the different uh, exchanges. However, Ben's website does a pretty good job. They've got Poloniex, Huobi, Bitstamp, BitMEX, Kraken, Bittrex, Bitfinex, Gemini, Binance. And of course, you can click on all exchanges and that's it. Or you can, you can drill down. And what I want to show you is this is the net flow. So for the ins and outs, of what is happening. Obviously, when the miner supply when the miner supply flow is outflow, means they are sending them to the exchanges. Maybe they're not selling. Maybe they just like to move around Bitcoin. I personally don't like to move Bitcoin. If I'm going to move, I'm going to sell it. So in this situation, you have to take a look at it. So the the flow, the net, he has been many a time. Let's just that's the out. That's the uh, zooming out. Now let's just zoom in to see how bad is this. Not that bad. So yeah, there's been a lot of more outflows, we can say. And, and you can break this down by clicking on flow as far as the inflows. 17th of July, 18th of July, very nice. Uh, you've got a little under 2K, so 1.7. And the outflows, how much is that? Okay, well, it's almost 3K, so you take the out minus the in. The net flow is roughly, what is this, 800 or something like that. So yeah, it's true, this is very, very true that uh, miners are reducing the holdings, but when you look at the grand scheme of things, not a big deal. So that's what we have in that section. I just wanted to just remind people to do their own research and uh, zoom out when things get a little bit uh, hairy and it's not as bad as you think. And then lastly, actually a couple of things, 5X. So this is Peter Brandt. He's, I've been following him since I got into crypto uh, in 2017. And he's been a trader since, geez, 1975. And uh, he's a big, big proponent of crypto, uh, depending on actually what it is. I don't think he's a big fan of like anything besides Bitcoin. I think he's he said many of things about altcoins and how, how bad they are. But he does make a good point. And he talks about this is not Peter Schiff's day. And before we go on, I'm not here to dump all over Peter Schiff, the gold bug. But I'm just saying. Peter's got a good point. He says, this is not Peter Schiff's day, and the next 10 years will be cruel to him as well. The Bitcoin GCF ratio chart is forming a channel that might become the right shoulder of an inverse head and shoulder pattern, projecting a ratio of 150 to 1, meaning Bitcoin will outpace gold by 5x. Now, he's not saying that holding gold is bad. I own gold. I own silver. I see no problems with holding both of those. But what he's saying is that if you want the fastest horse, it's probably not going to be gold. And because of that, maybe you might want to pick up a little bit more Bitcoin than you do with gold. And that's pretty much all he's really saying here. And Peter Schiff, of course, hasn't responded. But I will say this uh, before I move on to, to the next piece, which is this. We always demonize the people in that we don't know, right? We always demonize them. We see people and we hear snippets and we're like, that guy's a jerk. But that lady's off her rocker. Uh, I did a, a show yesterday or a couple of days ago and it was with uh, uh mauricio and he it's uh, him and da vinci and they do a podcast and uh, we were talking about things and he said that he had uh, i think it was raul powell and he had him debate uh peter schiff and he said off camera he said once they got done and it was all heated whatever else he said you know he goes that peter is actually a pretty good guy he's actually a, you know very funny guy he's very engaging he said some very uh, lighthearted things at the end. And, you know, I think he's kind of softening up. So I know like when we see these things, we're like, we, and I've been guilty of this too, I'll be honest with you. But as I 
would like to remind everybody that uh, nobody is as, as bad as you think they are and nobody is as evil as you think they are. Sometimes they're just stubborn. Sometimes they're just incompetent. Sometimes they just don't know and sometimes they just haven't done the research. So when I talk about these things, I'm not here to demonize everybody, anybody or be flameful. It's just that, uh, you know, on this point, I think Peter should bend the knee just a little bit. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And then also, and this is just to piggyback off what I was saying, uh, there was a leaked video and a call, and it was between Donald Trump and RFK Jr. I know that on this on this channel, a lot of people like RFK Jr. I like RFK Jr. I think he's a he could be a great candidate. But uh, in this call, they were talking about an endorsement to RFK and talking about vaccines. And one of the things that he said in there, and I just, I just wanted to drill my point home, is in this call that was made public, which it wasn't supposed to be public, he says, and this is Trump talking, he says, you know, he goes, Joe's a good guy. He's like, Joe's a great guy. He said, well, he said, to, to, to be fair, he said, Joe's a good guy. He called me directly and he asked me how I was doing after I got shot. And he goes, it was uh, very nice. So again, like, I know that we really want to like demonize everybody, but sometimes it's just not that bad. So I just want to bring it to everybody's attention. And I got to tell you, if Trump and RFK Jr., what a ticket that would be. Anyhow, that's what we have. And uh, to finish this off, CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike is some type of uh, antiviral type of software, I suppose, under the Windows, Windows operating system. This doesn't affect... Uh, Max or Linux, but apparently this CrowdStrike update, one little update, screwed up everything as far as banks. There are some across the United States and I think other parts of the world, banks are now not working. Airlines are shuttered and a host of different businesses around the world are just not working because they got this, what's called the blue screen of death, B-S-O-D. Now this update went out and I, apparently it, it works, uh, but that didn't stop the entire, almost the entire air business from going to a crawl from what you see right here in a 24 hour, or excuse me, a 12 hour time lapse of American Airlines. So if you're flying today, that's pretty bad, but that's just what it comes down to. And the reason why I bring this up is because with CrowdStrike, you have a centralized point of failure. That's all I wanted to say. You have a centralized point of failure here as the update goes out and all the different centralized computerized systems. And what I like to see, I know we don't like to talk about politics on this, on this channel, right? We don't, well, actually I don't mind talking politics, but some people hate when I talk about it. But Cynthia Lummis, Senator from Wyoming says, hey, you know what form of currency hasn't been affected by widespread cyber outages? Bitcoin, strength in numbers. And that's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive. But that is it for that portion. If you want to stick around, I'll answer some questions and uh, we'll do a little Q&A. But if you got to take off, take off. I appreciate you stopping by. I do.